Howdy y'all, DJTJ here with RollToWound.com. Today we're going to be looking at the point changes for third edition. So we got this beautiful spreadsheet. If you're interested in diving in and checking out what changed, how much it changed, stick around. All right, guys. Um, this spreadsheet was created by a fellow named Daniel Street. I found it on Facebook. So, Daniel, if you're out there, much props um, to you because this is a super great resource for anybody looking at all the changes. I have a link for this on the blog post. So, go check that out and you have access to it and you can totally break this down. If you want to pause the video, go get that link so you can follow along or you can always just pause your screen. Um, so, I'm not going to go deep diving into everything. I'm going to show you every sheet and all the changes. So that way, if you don't want to go to the blog post, you can just sort of pause the video, look at the changes. But I'll try to hit on all the, all the key notes that I see. So let's get started. We're going to start out with Order and the Daughters of Cain. So the first big thing that we've seen, obviously, is um, Marathi Cain is... Um, and the Shadow Queen, they're all combined unit. It's a, uh, a 60 point upgrade. 660, I still think that's a touch cheap. Um, that's my opinion. Uh, that is a really good combo. It is one of the stronger things in that book. And it is a super devastating monster. You have to know how to play around Marathi. Um, we're going to scroll over real quick and we'll see some of the uh, some of the big changes here that you did see um, percentage wise and they stayed pretty reasonable across the board um, except for the blade coven which went up quite a bit and you're, you're gonna see a lot of those um, those war bands like that that are sort of like uh, they they did increase in points quite a bit Um but all in all, the Daughters of Cain were, were left relatively unscathed by the major increases. And the one thing I will say is that we get into this, up, across the board, everybody went up except for one book. Um, and they're more, they're all pretty generally even, except for a few that got uh, really, really hurt and a couple that were, were left alone a little bit, but you're, you're seeing a, a between a five and a 20% jump across the board in almost every unit. Uh, endless spells across the board too have went up a substantial bit, especially the book or the war scroll ones from your battle tomes, because the rules didn't really change yet that we know of, unless there's an FAQ, but their points did go up quite a bit except for Heart of Fury, which is an invocation. And these, you know, when I say endless spells, these are invocations too. But All right, moving right along. All right, Fire Slayers. Got some of the leaders. A lot of drops up here. Volkite Berserkers went up 20, 20 points. Where you're going to see some of the what hurt a little bit of the um, the fire slayers is the coherency rules with these guys a little bit. That's going to be the change that you're going to see. Yeah, you're used to berserkers and everything um, being really spread out. Um, only a little bit for your uh, magma droths. So look at that percentage change on line 38. Uh, there are only five and ten percent changes on those magma droths. It's pretty good. Um, you, you'll see a lot of the the bigger monsters throughout this that got pretty good substantial shifts up because, especially ones that are heroes and monsters, because they're going to get a lot of extra rules in third edition. Uh, their invocations, molten, stayed the same, and you call it a little bit there. All in all, they stayed relatively low across the board dropped in many places too so that was a really big help um, for them deep can deep can we got a few non-changes non um, aspect of the sea went up uh, your leviadon went up 11 percent 
But again, we're seeing here that they're pretty low. Like your biggest change was um, the Alopex. But percentage-wise, pretty reasonable. Your, your Leviathan was your highest one, which once again, any of those monsters, any of those behemoths, the big stuff, they all seemed across the board to get a point increase because of the new rules. Overlords or otherwise known as KO. All right, KO. So they did catch a few on um, the gun hauler engine riggers. We saw some 20 point hikes. They came out okay. Navigators went down. Chemist stayed the same. Average chain is a 6%. Not bad. Um, your frigates went up quite a bit. Well, I don't say quite a bit. I think that's still a reasonable change. KO needs to go up in points a little bit more than what they did, in my opinion. They are very powerful in the current meta, and it's going to be interesting to see with the new rules, spell in the bottle, different things, how these things are going to work. Um, but KO right now is a is a S tier army. If you know how to play it, it it honestly is. All right, Realm Lords. And what everybody, everybody's been hating these guys. Uh, Teclas, he gained 80, put him at 740, which is good. Their overall change was a 9% change. Um, some of their spells went up. Yeah, could, their spells could have went up a little bit more. Um, So across the board, they went up a good bit, and I think that's justified. Um, hopefully, they're getting close to pricing Teclas out of most list. I'm still not sure if that's there yet, but all in all, it's a good increase on the wardens. And once again, guys, if you have a specific army, just go ahead and pause the screen, catch the link. I'd love to hear in the description what you think of the changes for your specific army that you are knowledgeable and you play about. Um, because a lot of the order, I've only got really one order army, and that's the Stormcast. And it's sort of like a fledgling warband. So m more of my knowledge of all this is playing against it. Seraphon, let's see what their total increase was. 13%. And Stegadon, Skink Chief went up quite a bit, quite a bit on those. Troglodons went up. Lord Croak went up, but <laughs> it's still a bargain for what he does. That's it. Is that? Is that the new like price of Lord Croak for all? It's just, that's a bargain. He should have been five fifty. Engine of the Gods stayed reasonable. Oh, Bastilladon with the Ark went down a good bit. Good bit. Sunblood underappreciated uh, unit right there. They're pretty nasty. I think your bigger base, uh, the cavalry suffered. Not, not, nobody run cavalry. Um, skinks came out really, really nice. Regular skinks. Um, there they go. Skinks came out pretty good. I mean, that increase really isn't that much, especially with this amount of summoning they get. But I think Skinks came out pretty good. All right, Stormcast. Let's. This list is huge, obviously. If you play Stormcast, oh my goodness, they're an eight percent change. It, and I'm betting. Yeah, you got moderate changes on most units, which honestly, they could have just left them alone. Like judicators, liberator, none of this needed, none of them needed a um, 
a points raise, I don't believe. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe the new book's coming out, but that's going to change all the points anyway. So, um, you know, maybe stuff like the hurricane crossbows, those points increases are justified. So, um, Evocators on the Draca line, that's fine. Celestin Prime. Uh, uh, I don't know. I guess it gets a lot of cool rules, but it's a named, so. So you're seeing a pretty good increase. It wasn't insane. So if you are a Stormcast player, it's not insane. It, it puts you closer to the median than it you were prior. Um, Star Drake. I, I'm I'm debating. I think it could have stayed at five. That's my opinion. Maybe they just don't want it in smaller games. Is why they wanted to cap it up there. Um, but man, they thank goodness they, they didn't touch their endless spells, except for the comet, which is the only one I've ever really seen anybody use. And they need some new rules. All right, moving, moving, moving. Sylvaneth. Let's look at. Sylvaneth. Sylvaneth is a moderate points change at 8%. Pretty good. I think Sylvaneth was another one that we didn't need to see too many points raises, but Alarial was a good one to bring up. Um, I think with her new rule set, that yeah, her stuff is possible. I don't know. When we get to that level of points, I, I don't know if, what is justified. I just know that Nagash is overcosted. Um, Drika, okay. Tree Lords only went up 10, which is good. Um, Dryads went down. You know, their battle line pretty much stayed the same, which is good. Uh, Durthu did gain 40. Out of anything in the book that probably needed a little up, okay, Durthu. I'm guessing that the Hunters all went up a good amount because... Um, with a lot of the new command abilities, they could. I could see them getting a little out of hand if you know how to uh, stack some of the command points and the uh, spells and stuff. All in all, an okay. I don't see nothing crazy. Let me know if you play uh, play Sylvaneth. What was the what was the biggest upset to you? All right, cities. Cities is another huge list. All right, let's see what their general points. Three percent. 3% raise on cities. Lots of minuses. I think that's, that's what's balancing that out. Is that there's... You know... No one's going to say that many units in cities were overcosted. Dark shards went up. That's... Gosh, that might be... A steam tank went up. Okay. 15 point raise. Is that the highest? Oh... Sisters of the Watch went up at a 20. Yeah, very, very moderate. So I think with a lot of the command abilities and look at all these units just dropping, I mean, some of the stuff that uh, a battle mage on Griffin, I, when's the last time you saw that? So some of these that are going down really needed to go down because no one played them. Um, I'm okay. I'm okay with this. It is a Sigmar needs some love, especially for your Warhammer Fantasy Battle people that are still sticking around. A lot of you have like these armies and they needed some attention. They needed some love. War Hydra didn't change. Her economy stayed. Flagellance. 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 Uh, the Great Swords, pretty good staple right there. They only increase a little bit. I think that's good. I'm glad they didn't. A lot of uh, a lot of people use that sort of as their hammer. So all in all, cities came out pretty well. I think out of the lot cities as far as just points changes came out the best um 
unless you count KO, because I think KO should have had the highest raises. All right, so you let me know. Who out of order came out the best? Mine's Cities of Sigmar. Just from a from a raw numbers perspective at Cities, but um, they did a lot of drops. All right, moving on to Chaos. Slaves are up first. Um, let's look at their... Another long list on slaves. There's a seventh percent, so a little moderate increase. You get, you do. They did um, do some minuses. They do Bellacor. They dropped him down, which is good. Gaunt Summoner on disc went down, which is nice because I know people that were still taking it at 260 and thinking it was a pretty good deal. So that's something I've I've got a Gaunt Summoner on disc, and I'm looking at going. Hey, uh, Chaos Lord on Manticore. went down sorcerer lord only gained 10 which is um pretty good i think that that with all the new buffs i think it's it's i'm looking more because that chaos lord on sorcerer i mean that chaos lord on sorcerer that chaos sorcerer on manticore i do think there's a lot of play in in all sorts of different lists you can take him in you know if you take i'm taking him in zinge but you can take him in slaves lots of play there uh, a lot of people talking about the Demon Prince. The Demon Prince are fine. I just see them getting shoot off the board too much. If they make combat, they're devastating, but you, people just shoot them. The shooting meta is too crazy right now. Anything going crazy? All their endless went up. Uh, Dark Fire's now 100, which brings it in line to with all the rest of the endless spells that are really, really good that people always take it, You know, if you, if you go look at a book and you see that there's an endless spell for a hundred points, that means a lot of people take it. Um, the other came out. Okay. Let's see if there was a crazy percentage change on any of these guys. Yeah. These are the, um, these are those war bands. Like I said, a lot of them went up crazy. Oh, and this is a good note right here. Chaos Marauders, a men's size down to 10 from 20. Um, uh, Chaos Warriors, a men's size up to 10 from 5. So they, I, I'm guessing that's fine. I, this kind of hurts the Warriors a little bit. I think I would have liked them at 5. A lot of people took 5 for backline objective holders. Um, but the Chaos Marauders, probably one of the best units in the book. And it getting... It, I think at a raw score, it gained points per model, obviously, but it went down in the unit size. So that's going to hurt it building these bigger blobs. It is battle line though. So you can use your points to do that. Oh no, they came out. Okay. Uh, a lot. Okay. So he knights players there's so much pain right now on the internet for you guys because if you didn't realize this uh these of you that don't play uh all the he knights players have been you know very upset with the changes of the new book with the points costs um and a lot of the abilities they everybody's saying everything's over costed well they were hoping to get a, a fix but they went up 14 percent on average and I don't think that number is sort of a bloated number. Like some of these might be a little skewed because maybe a couple units went drastically down or up. I think that's a pretty solid across the board change. It's just, yeah, like everything went up basically. And if it didn't, it wasn't maybe, well, the, you know, in Traptors, I think people were taken, so that's that's not bad. Keep your secrets, 80 points. But then again, you know, they can still summon. The rules are still good on Keepers. Uh, seekers. Went down, but... Slick, like... Some of these went up. Some of them went down. Did they reflect? Oh, they think that Slick Blade Seekers are that much better. I don't know. Uh, endless Spells. Let's look. 
wheels is 100 now? Okay. I don't tell me if I'm wrong on that. I think that's a little high. <laughs> I, I don't know. Let me know if I'm wrong. Tell me if that is undercosted still. All right, maggot can. Let's look at the a total. 8%, so that's a moderate. And I think that that could have been lower. Um, it's an older book. And, you know, Mad Kid and Nurgle is, is fun to play and fun to play against. But it is definitely showing its age right now. So having too many points increases I don't think were warranted. Uh, let's... Great unclean one. That was who I was looking for. Only a 30-point increase... And that puts its percentage at 9%. Not horrible. I, I think that that's everybody takes the great unclean one. I, and it made it a nice 350, but I need about 350. Maybe that was, maybe this isn't being a meme. Um, great unclean one. Good. The clock can need to go up. Uh, drones. Good drones. That's a lot of people take the drones. Beast only went up five. Play bears say the same. Very helpful. Putrid Black Kings did go up substantially. All in all, not horrible. Not horrible. I think they came out pretty good. Remember, guys, everybody's going up in points. So you got to look at like no one wants their units to increase in points. No one does. Um, it's the how much they increase is what what you got to keep in mind. All right. Zinch. 26% across the board. They get, they get hit pretty heavy handed. They're still feeling the repercussions from what December of 19 or the January of 2020 when it won, like Zinch wants every single GT in Europe or something. Um, still got good war scrolls. Uh, the battalions are really good in Zinch. Now we're not going to be able to take them, but the war scrolls are still fine. I built several lists with Zinch and it's not all doom and gloom since I did run change host so much that I have a good pool of points to play with. Um, and we weren't totally killed. I played mostly demons, so can't talk to too much about the uh, mortals. I know that they probably shouldn't increase it as much as they did, but uh, blue scribes 15. That's reasonable. They're pretty good. I don't, the changeling's interesting. I don't think a 30 point increase was warranted, uh, but bringing them up to 260 would probably have been okay. Okay. A cursling, that's what really kills me. Um, I've been, I was really excited to get the cursling on the board here for this edition, and and now it's almost a 200 point model, and I'm like, is he worth 200? I don't know. They were really heavy handed with a lot of the heroes here. Fate Skimmer did not need 40 points. Um, all right, Gaunt Summoner increased. Uh, this really kills me too. The Magister, which is used to be one, of, I think it was the cheapest hero in the book, went up 25 po points. And I'm just like, ugh. Even though the Dis Magister only went up that, but it was nice to have a 100 point hero. I think that every book should have a 100 point hero, you know, or a less. That way you can fit something in. You need that, you just need one extra hero. You need somewhere to stash a, um, an artifact or something. Give me something cheap to put on there. Um. Lord of Change went up forty to four twenty. Yay! Um, I think they I think they are trolling us with some of these numbers. Uh, I'm not super upset. I would have loved to send four hundred, um, but Lord of Changes are good. I mean, if they're good and they're they're good at shooting and good at casting, so not totally unreasonable, especially with them now with all the hero and the behemoth abilities. Kairos went up a little bit. They're almost in line with each other. Uh, Exalted Flamers was probably one that killed me. It went up 40 points, which ends up being 40%. Exalted Flamers, when you look at raw, what they do, a unit of three uh, Flamers are actually have more damage output potential. However, 
they do buff like you just usually would take one exalted in your list to buff all your other flamers so it's almost like a tax on it i still think it was a little bit much for these guys but because they're, they're kind of squishy they will die pretty quick it's almost like the exalted flamers are almost like a hero with a good shooting attack it's pretty much what they what i look at them as flamers went up that was going to be expected uh they went up 25 percent not horrible i still think that they're worth taking especially just one unit if just one unit pinks went down five now um the interesting thing if you look at the actual listing on the uh ghb which face hammer did a review i'll link that also in the description if you want to see the actual book Pinks have a weird notation that says pink horrors are battle line if you only take pink horrors. Blue horrors and brimstone, or if you take any blue brimstones or any um, blues, they're not battle line. My question is, and I've asked this, if I have pinks on the board and then they split into blues, does it cease to be battle line? Because if that happens, I don't like it at all, I guess. Um, I'm sure there's lots of missions and lots of things that, you know, we need that. So let me know in the comments. I think that the, if you take them as pink solely, that they're battle line for the rest of the game, no matter what they split into. But let me know. And all in all, I'm happy with that point adjustment down. I, now I'm running three units of pinks when I was running like one or two and some blues. So that really helped. I think you're going to see a lot more pinks on the board nowadays. And the rest of these, yeah. Brimstones went up a high amount, which I think is really unwarranted. Because if you know if you're taking brimstones, you're really taking it some kind of um, some kind of you're using them for a screen. You're doing something. I think it was really really bad. Uh, and far as these go with endless spells, they didn't really need a point increase, especially. I, I don't think so. They could have been moderate. Like if they all went at fifteen, it'd probably be reasonable. All right, Skaven. Another long list. Oh, 12%. So a little above average. Um, you're going to see your favorite things that are that went up. Well, Warp Lightning didn't. It only went up 10, which is good. Spy Call Swarm actually went down. Something interesting to look at. Are your vermin lords got a little bit of an increase? Oh, where am I going? I want to look. Plague monks went up, but I think that was because they had used to take them in 20. Tell me if I'm wrong. Storm fiends was the huge increase. Storm fiends saw a 21% bump. Um, I still think Storm Fiends have some play. So Warpfire, Grinder went down. Those two are interesting. All right. Uh, Rat Ogres only went up a little bit. There's some actual play with them out of the Kragnos book now. Uh, Warp Lightning Cannon, only at 5. I think it's even better in this edition because there's going to be more heroes running around and the board is shorter, so that shorter range is going to help. Giselle's Clan Rats only went up a touch. So all in all, I know there was some pretty big increases on thing. Like, why did Hell Pit go up? I don't think that needed it. Um, Grace Serum Bell, that's probably an okay point adjustment. Furnace went up a good bit. But I think what you're seeing is that even though everything went up, if you're not looking at Vermin Lords, I think everything's okay and reasonable. I'm still taking, I still think Storm Fiends have a place, even at that point, especially with the shorter boards, because that was the biggest uh, downside to Storm Fiends is they're, they're short range. So shorter boards mean they can cover more of it. All right, Blades. Average gain, 9%, so that's a pretty average. Looking all right. Blood Warriors went up by 30. Hmm. All right. I don't don't know if that was needed to happen, but I could be wrong. There's probably a lot more buffs. You can give them better armor saves now, so 
Uh, Reavers stayed okay. Blood letters, like, just make them super cheap. Just make them the cheapest thing ever. They are so bad. Flesh hounds are good that they stayed at five. That's a good thing. They didn't make you a, a minimum 10. I was That would be bad because I think the flesh hounds are still good at 105 points. Cole went down. Uh, as far as the bloodthirsters, they all got a little bit more. Yeah. I guess because, you know, being heroes, monsters, all that, I don't think he should. I guess it's just bringing them all sort of in line with each other. Blood crushers. Skull Reaper's got a pretty pretty big bump. At least they're staying at five. Wraith Mongers. And their invocations. Eh, they stayed okay. Stay moderate. Good. Skulls. Probably their best, which you see everybody take. There you go. 60 points. Still reasonable. All right. Beasts. Beasts, 8%. I think Beasts could have just dropped. And one of the oldest books. They've been one of the worst books forever. And did anything really lose points? Zangor Shaman. Okay. And why was the tor why does the Taurus need to be a hunt okay. Let me know in the comments why the Wildfire Taurus is 110 in the new edition. What makes it so good that it needs to be one of the more expensive endless spells that I've seen on this list? Let me know. Dragon Ogre's up a little bit. Saigor stayed. Gores went up a touch. 10. Ungore still at 10. Hey, let me know what you guys think of the Beast of Chaos. I think that they could have probably just set Pat like no increases in points across the board. I think that would have helped their book a lot. Instead of getting these 5 and 10 and 15 point raises, just leave them where they were at. Um, especially, I want to know about the Wildfire Taurus. Why is it so much? All right, guys, we're going to cover death, destruction, and end of spells in the next episode. So thanks for watching, and y'all be good.